We have Jim Gray, and Jim Gray is one of our sought out, sought after speakers, leaders of Thrive, my business partner. And so today, today Jim is going to talk to you guys how to keep score in this real estate business and all the things you need to keep score of. So Jim, welcome. And why don't you give us a little bit of background? And um, we really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can, I can tell that I'm on. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'm I'm Jim. Um, I got licensed in uh, 2000. Well, I, I my first calendar year in real estate was 2013, so not that long ago. Uh, my story I've told it a bunch of times, but um, yeah, I had a I had a long time business with with my best friend. I was the best man in his wedding. He and I had a great business together for seven years. It all ended in a litigious ball of fire uh, right around in 2009 and. As we split up uh, in a messy divorce, um, it cost me all the money that I had, and I had to leave the town that I was living in, and I moved back to the town I grew up in, um, which I hadn't lived in for 25 years. Uh, I was in my mid-40s. I had no money, and I was thinking, man, I am completely unemployable, and um, there are people in my life who, who want to eat every day, like every day. And interestingly, um, you can't like trade for food anymore. And because it was the suburbs, I couldn't farm my backyard with any sort of uh, scope to feed everybody. So at the end of the day, it was like, I got to I gotta find a way to make money. So I got my real estate license. Um, and my first year, I sold 57 houses by myself. Um, I almost died. But uh, you learn a lot when you go smoking through that many transactions year one. Over a six and a half year period, I sold 437 houses with a small team locally. I was at uh, Keller Williams at that time. Um, I became the director of lead generation for an expansion team that was the 13th largest at Keller Williams at that time. We had seven locations in four states, 60 agents, sold about 600 houses a year. My role um, was to generate the leads, create the lead generation training systems, and you know help the agents convert. So that was my main role there. During that time, I became a, a professional real estate agent coach, and I continue to to do that to this day. And probably since um, late 2019, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I've I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with close to 2,000 agents, mostly talking about um, strategic business growth and, and lead generation. Um, so that's kind of what, what brings me to you today. Um, and Tanya, do you want me just to kind of launch right into it? Do you think? Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, we're all right. Talk By the way, much. Maria Price back again. Yes, Maria. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Cause I thought maybe you were shoving something sharp in your eye the last time, but all right. Good to see you. Do you want me I, to go? I, I no, can. no, 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 no. In fact, I want you to teach the back half of this for me. What do you think? No, not so much. Okay. All right. You can do it. Oh dude, you can do it. Okay. I'm going to try and share my screen here. Uh, I'm going to be using the technologies. Hold, please. Man, if we could have a drum roll, that would be fantastic. Hang on a second here. Hold, please. I've got, I've got three screens. You've ever had this happen? You have three screens and you kind of lose where you are. Okay. That you, must be your, uh, your uh, DII, your I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Can you guys see my screen keeping score in real estate? All right, yes. good. Good. I'm picking up something here. Okay. All right, you guys. So listen, we're going to talk about keeping score in real estate. This, this in so many ways, in my opinion, is one of, um, one of the critical pieces to being successful in this business. It, it's, it's, it's imperative to know, uh, are you winning or losing? Are you getting closer to the goal or are you getting further away from the goal? Um, understanding how to assess that, right, and to make decisions based on your assessments is so critical. So here's the deal, my friends. If you're playing a game, you can't win if you're not keeping score. 
So I want to go over what I believe are the characteristics of games worth playing. Okay, these are the characteristics. Um, first is the time is finite. It has a beginning, a middle, and it has an end, and the end is critical. Um, points are scored and tallied. In a game worth playing, you keep score. Um, there are game days and there are practice days. And games that are worth playing, the players never get that wrong. They know when it's practice day and they know when it's game day. And they show up a particular way on both of those days. Strategy and skill are rewarded. Games that are worth playing, guys develop and improve their skills because they want to win this game. There are rules in games worth playing and the rules are enforced. So these are the characteristics of a game worth playing. Game is going to be the analogy that I'm going to apply to business in particular. But may I say, in my experience, I think these principles really generally can apply to all facets and areas of your life. Okay. Um, here's the first thing I want to start with. We want to definitely determine what does winning look like? What does it look like? I talk to so many agents who I can tell in their mind, they don't quite have a clear picture of what winning looks like. So here's what I would recommend. Uh, you got to know how many points you need to score and by when. That's it. How many points do you need to score in this game? And when do you have to get them scored by? Because if you hit those points and you get them scored before or at the time allotted, that's winning. Okay, there are two types of games, friends. Two types. Those that matter and those that don't. There are two types of games. There are those that matter and those that don't. Um, people have often asked me when I tell that story, you know, selling 57 houses in a single year, right? They asked Jim, um, how did you do that? Thinking that there was some magical formula in what I was doing. And the truth of the matter is, um, I knew that if I didn't generate a commission, I would not be able to pay my rent, put food on the table, and keep clothes on the backs of my wife and my daughter. That was a real thing. So it, I was playing a game that I took deadly seriously. And I felt like there was a lot at stake. And that's what just drove me. Um, for many of you on this call, you're likely newer agents. My first year, I was new, just like you. And guess what? I was the worst agent in real estate. I couldn't be, I, how could I not be? I was just newly minted. And yet I still outsold agents that had decades of experience. And I think the difference was I was playing the game because it mattered to me. Okay, let me show you what a game, what a game that matters looks like. Let's talk about basketball. Here's a picture, right? Look at this. Look at this. Can you tell there are teams and they're wearing uniforms? Look at that. Can you tell? It looks like their strategy. Guys are playing position. They're looking at a goal. They can tell exactly where that ball needs to go. Look at this. There's a guy in a separate uniform, a referee watching to enforce the rules. Look above the backboard. There's a shot clock because these guys understand that they only have so much time to shoot the ball once they get to a certain point in the court. Look at this. There are playoffs. These guys know that there is an entity keeping track of how many games they win, and they're ranked against the other teams in their division, and they want to move up in the rankings. And, oh, and look at this game is so well played, and there is so much at stake that people pay tickets, pay, pay money to buy tickets to come and watch. Now, this is a basketball game, right? Let me show you another basketball game. That's a basketball game. That's a basketball game. But in this game, if you notice, it doesn't seem like anybody's in any particular position. You can't tell who's on what side. Um, 
there doesn't seem to be a lot of skill necessarily in how the ball is being handled. I don't see any referees around. So I'm guessing that most of these guys just are generally calling fouls on their own. And I'm pretty sure that um, whatever the score is at the end of the day, I'm not sure anything matters. This is a basketball game. This is a basketball game. So here's the point I'm trying to make here, or the question I want you to consider right now. What type of game are you playing in your real estate business? Is it varsity level, division one, collegiate game, or is it pickup? By the way, you should know that um, either is completely valid. Either is completely valid. It's simply up to you. But what I can tell you is if you're not getting the results that you are expecting, one of the places you might look is are you playing the game like a D1 school in the finals or are you just showing up on a Thursday night to play pickup? They're, they're both basketball, but they're played very differently. Okay. Um, Here's another thing I want you to consider. Where are you in the game right now? Remember, in a game, a game worth playing, time matters, right? And if you notice, if you ever watched a professional game, if you ever watched football, right? I mean, especially with the timeouts, they keep very precise track of how much time is on the clock. All right, so let's talk about your business. If you have something to write with, um, have something to write with and maybe a calculator nearby. I want you to write down what your income goal is for real estate this year. Now, don't be shy. Write the number down. Write it down. What is your income goal? And what I mean to say is, what is your net income goal? How much money do you want to bring home and pay for your life? That number is really important. I want you to write a number next to it. How much money have you made? So there's your goal and how much money you have made. And let me ask you, how much time is left in the game? How much time is left to hit your goal? I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to stop the share. Go into the chat, you guys. Go into the chat. Um, let me see you toss your goals in there. Let me see some goals here. Go ahead, put it in there. Put it in there. Let me see. Can I see it? Who's going to put their goal in there? Oh, oh here we go. Chris Nolan, uh, 250000 God bless. Love that. Who else? Who else? Michael, Ben, Maria. Oh, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Oh, Maria, 40K. Yes. Excellent. Carmelo. Whoop, whoop. Carmelo, I got 60K, 35K, cool. Anybody else? Okay, good. These are great numbers. Now, you don't have to tell me, but I want you to look at that number and then look at where you are right now, how much you've made. And there's probably a difference between the goal and the actual. Uh, I, got a, I got a nice lady shake, nodding her head. She's like, yes, Jim. Yes, there's a gap. Carmelo's like, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, is that the OK sign or the zero sign, Carmelo? Whichever way you want to take it. <laughs> All right, brother. I got you. All right. All right. I'm with you. OK, so I'm going to go back to sharing. I'm going to go back to sharing. Hold, please. I'm going to share. OK. All right. So let me run a little example for you. Let's say your income goal was $85,000 net, right? So, and let's say you've made 25,000, okay? Now, here's, here's the question. How much time is left in the game? I can tell you exactly, everyone. I can tell you exactly. So whatever your goal is and whatever your actual is, if there's a gap there right now, if you want to hit that number this year, you've got 26 weeks to get there, 26. I want you to observe, you guys, the precision here. And this, this is not rocket science. 
Here's the goal, here's the actual, and here's the time left. Just like in a game, when you know what is required to win and when you know where you are in the game and how much time you have left, you can call a play that makes sense. All right? Um, okay. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through something here. Stick with me. Now there's going to be some math available. Let's go back to this $85,000 figure. What you're looking at here is what we call an economic model. Okay. Um, in real estate, this is a way that you might do some planning. And I think it's quite simple. Let's say you wanted to make 85 grand net. You want to take that home, pay for your life with that. Let's assume that um, that represents a what's called a 75% profit margin. So for every gross dollar that comes in, you're going you're gonna to pay out 25% in expenses and you're going to keep 75%. So what that means is what you really need to do is make $113,000 gross because you're going to pay out 25% and keep 75%. Now, let's say that your average sale price in your market's 225. I'm just making that up. Let's say your average commission per, per close is 2.8%. So every time you have a closing, you make a gross of $6,300. This is before um, you pay EXP or any other fees. So some simple math is, you know to make the 85 net you need to gross 113. So when you take 113,000 and you divide it by $6,300, here's what you get, 18 units. So in this game, we've got to close 18 houses in 12 months, 18 houses in 12 months. So you can say, this is the game we're playing, right? We've got to get to 85 grand, it's going to take 18 closes, and we have 44 weeks to get there. There are 52 weeks in a year. Let's assume that in the course of a year, you're probably not going to work a good eight weeks. People say, I work every week. And the answer is, no, you don't. And even if you do, let's just base our planning on something conservative. So 44 weeks, 18 units, 85 grand. That's the game. Um, in real estate, oops, in real estate, um, I recommend that you look at it. We're like a, it's like a football game. It has four quarters. So in this scenario, what you're looking to do is sell four and a half houses a quarter, about five a quarter. So as we're coming now to May 17th, we're almost at halftime of the game. And if this was the game we were playing, we would need to be closing in on nine units closed. Right, everybody? Nine units. All right, so now, now we're gonna do our own economic model together. Here we go. So stick with me, write down your income goal, write it down. Take that number and divide it by dot seven five. So you take your number, 100,000 divided by dot seven five. That number is the gross GCI you need to generate this year. So you net out to your income goal. Now, write that number down. So you've got your net, now you've got your gross. Um, now I want you to take your, your average sale price. So whatever your average is, some people are gonna be 200, some will be 400, some will be more or less. And multiply that by whatever your average commission percentage is, 3%, 2.5, whatever it is. I want you to get to that number, that number where um, every time you have a closing, on average, you're grossing this much in that one single check. Say it again. Uh, what do I have to do? So, um, what, uh, Carmelo, what's the average sale price of a house where you live? Uh, it's about in the mid 450s. Okay. So, let's say, let's say it's 450. Mm -hmm. What's the average commission that a real estate agent makes when they sell a house? 3%. Okay, so I would take my calendar, my calculator, 450 times dot zero three equals. So your average commission, call it 
drop it in the chat, you guys. What's your what's your average commission per close? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see some of them. What do you and got? Jim, if they're on a team, would they just do that? Yep. Separately? Yep. What you got? What you got? I'm looking in the chat. Oh, oh, hang on. Anybody? I, I don't see anybody. Is anybody putting them in there? No, I'm just lost right here. I'm sorry. So you take your average sale price, 400, 200, 300, multiply that times whatever is the average commission Asia makes. And when in doubt, just put 3% because that's normally what it's going to be. Oop. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Christopher Nolan, 11,000. Yes. I got 6,000. That's good. I'll wait for one more. Maria, what's yours? Didn't think I'd call on you, did you? <laughs> I got you. All right. Average sale price. Time. Oh, Maria, there we go. Ah, exactly. 5,000. There you go. Carmelo, 13.5. There we go. All right, good, you guys. So let's take that number and divide it into your gross, right? Um, if you're on a team, well, well I'll let, I, I know you guys, we got some Nolan team members here. So the numbers are not, the, the, we'll make the adjustment on those numbers, but let's, we'll use the gross for now. Um, uh, Take that number, gross, divide it into your gross, and that's the number of units. So you guys drop in the chat. Tell me how many units you need to be selling this year to, to hit your goal. Let me see what those numbers look like. Seven, six, cool. Who else? And Jim, on my team, we have an actual worksheet that breaks down the numbers uh, uh, appropriately to the. You know, I'm to the I am sure. Parts. I am sure. Yeah. So I would uh, for for Nolan team members, I would defer certainly to that sheet. So that number, you guys, that number, whatever that number is, seven, eight, ten, fifteen, twenty-five, whatever that number is, um, you want to be so familiar with that number right? Because that is one of the characteristics of winning. So you want to keep a very, very, very close eye on that. All right. I'm going to go back to sharing. All right. Now, that number, whatever it is, you want to divide that by two. So I've seen numbers like seven, I've seen numbers like six, I've seen numbers like 10. We divide that by two. You guys, why would we divide that number by two? What does that represent? Shout it out if you think you know. Uh, listing agent and buyer agent? No. no. Well done, Carmelo, though. Great, to, great stab at it. No, let's say, let's say your unit goal was 10. We divide it by two because guess what, you guys? We're halfway through the year. Oh, okay. All right. So if your goal was 10, you should be closing at pending a close at roughly five and with five to go. This is how you can tell, am I behind, on, or ahead? Behind, on, or ahead? So critical, so critical. And what I can tell you is, as I told you before, we're at about, we got about 26 weeks left in this year. All right, so stick with me now. It is often said that football is a game of inches and it really is. Um, I don't know if we have any football fans here. I watch a lot of football. Um, and I can just tell you that, um, you know, football is certainly, if you watch, they measure very carefully where that ball moves. In fact, in football, what's interesting, you get four downs. You move that ball three yards down, you will score every single time. It's not sexy, right? It's not all that exciting, but that's it. You can make a case that, look, if the play moves the ball 
three yards and we can do that every single down, we will score on every single possession. Can I tell you that in so many ways, real estate is also a game of inches. TV would have you believe that it's this sexy high flying thing and it can be that at times, but in most cases, it is a game of inches. So understanding, know, what, knowing what winning looks like, 18 units, seven units, 10 units, 25 units, whatever winning looks like, the question is, okay, now that I know that I'm, I'm say I'm behind and by this much, and I've got 26 weeks left, what do I do? How do I, how can I tell on an ongoing basis if I'm on or off track? And if I'm off track, how do I get back on track? Okay, let's talk through that. Okay, we call these KPIs. KPI is a fancy term for key performance indicator. Again, agents who do well at this business and, and grow, they get really good at focusing on the things in their business that move the business forward. And these things are not mysterious, okay? Let me walk you through what I would suggest are some of the, the best KPIs to focus on. First is closings, right? Um, that's your ultimate goal. How many closings do I need to have this year to pay for my life? But to have a closing, to have a closing, you have to have offers written and accepted. So that's good to keep count of. But to have offers written and accepted, you've got to have listing contracts signed. And when I say listings, I mean listings with both sellers and buyers. Customers have to sign a contract with you, selecting, committing themselves to you as their real estate agent. And to get a listing contract signed though, you have to go on a listing appointment. You have to either sit with a buyer or a seller and make a pitch for your services and get them to choose you, to sign a contract so that you can get an offer accepted for them so that you can have a closing and cash a check. But to, uh, but to go on an appointment with someone, you have to set an appointment. And to set an appointment, you have to you have to talk to people. Because if you talk to people with intention and with an excellent script, you will set appointments. If you set appointments, you will go on those appointments. If you go on those appointments, you will sign listing contracts. If you sign listing contracts, you will write offers and get offers accepted. When you get offers accepted, you will have closings. And when you have closings, you get paid. So what you see here is the most basic set of key performance indicators. I can tell you this, if an agent's having trouble in their business, the first thing I'll go to is how many conversations have you had? Or um, how many appointments have you gone on? Or how many houses have you shown? Or something in there, right? We'd want to interrogate that because it will likely be an indicator. If, there, if, something is not, if something's not working, there might be something that can be improved in one of these areas. I want you to really think about this, okay? Of all of these things, and you're new, right? So you're, many of you are newer on this call. Um, and it may be really difficult or seem difficult to exert much control over the closings. I would agree. So I, want, I would recommend you focus where you have the most control. Where can you control it the most? I would say there. Every single one of us tomorrow can have as many conversations as we decide. I'm going to let that sink in. One of the reasons I sold as many houses as I did my first year, I didn't know it at the time. I know it now looking back. One of the things that I did right was I was having more conversations on a daily basis with people than almost every one of my colleagues. I was just, I was saying a script that had as a component, hey, 
Um, do you know anybody who has mentioned lately they want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Maybe I could help them. I said that a lot. And every single day, I could control that one thing. And it made all of the difference. Okay. We're going to look back at another way to look at the economic model. I want you to think about something here. We want to now think about, okay, well, all right, Jim, smarty pants. What should the KPIs be on, say, a business where we want to do 18 units close at the end of the year? Great. Let's talk about that. Now, stick with me on this. It is typical, if you think about your business, how many units you want to do, the question that is good to ask is of the total units, 10, 20, in this case, 18, how many of those will be listings, sellers listing their house with you? It is good to have a 50-50 business. Half of them should be listings. So strategically in this imaginary business we're talking about today, we're thinking 18 houses sold. So nine of them will be sellers. And here's what we know. If I list nine houses, it's likely the other nine units in my goal, the buyers, will come from the listings. If I put up a listing, it's likely I'll also get a buyer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on taking the listings, knowing that when I get listings, the buyers will come. Okay. So in this case, if I want to close nine units at the end of 12 months, let's assume that every uh, every house I put under contract doesn't close. 90% do, but 10% don't. So what that means is what I really need to do is make sure um, that I get 10 under contract because I know that one on average will fall out to get me to the nine. Now, how many listings will actually get Contracts. Now, remember, these are conservative numbers. In the present market for listings, if you price something appropriately, it everything ought to sell. But let's base this on something conservative. So let's assume that of the listings I put up, only 80 of them, 80% of them, actually get an accepted purchase offer. So what that means is, actually, I got to get 13 under contract, right? Or I've got to get 13 listed because only 10 of them will get an accepted offer, and of the 10, one will fall out to get to the nine, okay? So I'm got, I got to list 13 to get 10 under contract to get one to the closing table. Now, here's a question. Okay, well, how many people do I need to meet with to sign a listing agreement? Well, let's assume that right now, at your current skill level, you'll sign half, okay? So if you meet with two, you'll sign one. If you meet with four, you'll sign two. If you meet with five, you'll meet, you'll sign two and a half. So in this case, you would have to hold 25 listing appointments to sign 13, to get 10 with accepted purchase offers, to get nine to the closing table. So do you see this developing? So you could make a case that in this business, I got to go on 25 good listing appointments this year. Okay, great. How many months in this year will I work? Let's say 11 for, for the case here, right? Um, that means I need to be going on 2.3 good listing appointments per month or about dot six per week. So here's the way I would look at that. Um, I got to go really on three listing appointments a month. And I really want to be trying to set one good listing appointment a week, knowing that if I set one a week, I'll go on three for the month. And of that three, right, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a couple. Are you with me on this? So we'll get back to this in a little bit. So kind of percolate on that. So now the question is going backwards. Let me see if I can go backwards. Remember how we talked about conversations is the one thing that we can control, or at least in the beginning, we can exert the most control over. So here's a question. If you wanted to sell 18 houses and you wanted nine of them to be listings, reasonably, how many people should you be talking to uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? This goes to something that I call the rule of 1%. 
if you take nothing away from today or if all of this, you're still kind of trying to sort this out and get it straight, okay? This would be one of the, 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 the writer downers I'd want you to take, the rule of 1%. In this case, let's say 18 units is your closing goal. If you take 18 closings and you divide that number by dot zero one one percent, you're going to get 1800. So in the rule of one percent to close 18 houses, you will have to have 1800 conversations in your 44 week time period. Now, 1800 probably seems like a lot. I see you nodding your heads, right? Well, let's let's break it down though. Truly. We've got 44 weeks in the year. If we take 1,800 divided by 44, well, you're having 41 conversations a week. And if you're working five days a week, if you divide 41 by five, that's eight. So you could make a case in this example, if you have eight conversations a day over 44 weeks in a year, you will have 1,800 conversations. And it is completely likely that the appointments you seek and the listings you want to take will come from all of that. Now, I'm going to throw in a caveat because many of you are building new businesses, okay? Um, my rule of thumb is take whatever that conversations per day number is and double it. So, my, my encouragement to you is talk to people, talk to them, talk to them. I know that this is probably one of the hobby horses that Tanya kind of whips you guys on a little bit, finding all the ways that you can interact with people. I'm going to, I'm going to show you something in in the camera, if you can see it, actually. I'm gonna see, I don't know if you can see this. I still do lead gen on a daily basis. Do you see this? Do you see what these hash marks indicate? Right there. So Jim Gray, Mr. Super Duper, you know what I'm keeping track of right there? Conversations, conversations. Every single day, every time I talk to somebody, it's a hash mark. And I don't get off personally. I'm not. I don't get. I don't get up from the chair you see me sitting in, till I hit between no less than ten conversations a day. So for the thing that I'm doing with recruiting, I I can't get out of this chair until I've had ten conversations of a certain stripe. And look how low tech that is. So tomorrow, you guys, tomorrow. Even if you don't do the math for yourself, you can say, well, Jim and Tanya tell me I got to really be talking about 16 people a day. Try it tomorrow. Get a pad of paper. Go to the mall. Get on the phone. Find an open house. Do whatever you think you, you, you should do and make a little hash mark every time you have a real estate related conversation. It will change your business. So and Jim, just going something I want to add to this is what I do is I'll do dials or door knocks and then I'll do conversations. And then, you know, each time how many people you need to talk to, right? Your conversion rates. Cause a lot of you guys are focusing on, well, I picked up the phone. I tried to dial five people or picked a phone and dialed 30 people, but like, how long did it take you? Right. And you make it a game and you just get better and better, which means you dial quicker, right? You, you qualify them quicker. And then you get on to the next one and you just learn that it's a numbers game and you got to be really efficient at it. Yeah, I, I can tell you for me in, in my recruiting, I, I know that roughly um, my answer rate hovers around 22%. It, it, it's what it is. It just, it, it is what it is. So I, I have a pretty a firm idea of, of how many dials on a daily basis that I've got to do to, to hit my numbers. Um, and it's actually, once you, once you get used to it, it's really not that hard. So again, going back to this game, these KPIs, right? I want to close 18 units this year. I'm going to focus on listings. I want to close nine. And for me, it's 16 conversations a day, one listing appointment a week, three listing appointments a month. That's it. 
that's it. And all of my skills, all of my systems, all of my mindset is focused on just this. Because if, if I get very granular and I'm focusing on this, I'll get to 18 units. Something, something that people don't know about when I talk about my first year in real estate, I, I think I, I did this on, a, on, a, on, on, a, on one of the other sessions that I did, but it, I, I love to note this. Um, my first year in real estate, you guys, I focused very hard on conversations. I was not great on the phone, um, but what I lacked in skill, I made up for in volume. What I lacked in skill, I made up in volume. So even though I, my skill was low, I took massive action. Um, Jim, I, question, yeah. Question for you. And, and you said 56 uh, transactions in that first year. That was a lot of conversations. Did you sustain any physical injuries during any of those conversations in that first year? No, it's interesting. No one punched me in the face. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure because I keep telling people, I don't know anybody that's ever sustained an injury making these phone calls. No. Now, may I say, people hurt my feelings, but here's no. what's beautiful. After 56 transactions, you have no feelings left. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. people slam the door on me with towels on. They're like, no, we don't want any help. And I was like, well, I don't want to see in your towel anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I swear I was in ho houses where I, they, I, I, I swear I was looking at a dead body. I stepped on a lady's Pomeranian. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. I had a guy wave a gun in my face. I'm like, Been there. you're going to list the house with me though. Right. Okay, good. Um, one of the things that happened to me my first year, you guys, is I went on 101 listing appointments. Wow. I, I own, I only listed and sold 37 houses. And I went on 101. There were times where I would, I would hear no 10 times in a row. It is disheartening. And yet, may I say, I just kept at the conversations because here's what I knew. Um, my skill would develop over time and it totally did. So what I'm telling you is, and Chris brings up a great point, you guys, um, take massive action. No one, you will, it, it, you, it won't hurt you. Oh my gosh, all that will happen. This is all that will happen is you will make more money than you ever thought. All I'm saying. And, and I say it with- What I, you're saying too, sorry, Jim, is- Go ahead. You guys are all new agents. And sometimes you get in this business and you focus on, well, I'm going to start with buyers. What Jim is telling you right now is if you learn how to work with listings, it's you get the process down just because you're new does not mean that you cannot dominate listings. 101 listing appointments in his first year. Yeah, you guys, and, and, and I would love to say it's because I was so cool. Uh, trust me, you can talk to my daughter. She will, she will verify I am not cool. Uh, but here's <laughs> what he did. Here's what I did do, you guys. I just followed a script. I just followed a script. And I, I will say, you know, sometimes you just got to believe Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Let me be the voice that says any one of you, any one of you could, can walk right out and list a $1 million house. You certainly can do it. You can do it. If you say you can do it, you can do it. But where did um, you find them? That's where they're all thinking right now. Where okay. So that's a great question. Um, so here's how I'll answer that. Uh, listen to your coach. She's got lots of ideas. I can tell you this though. Uh, Fizbo's is expired. Don't call me the devil. Even in a tight inventory market, there are opportunities there. Silker prospecting, holding open houses, knocking on doors, networking, right? Talking to your sphere of influence. I bet every single one of you probably has a thousand people in this crazy little device. And I, you could make a, you could make a hard case, um, that you should talk to every one of them tomorrow. And you might be shocked how many listings live there or how many future listings live there. So all I'm saying, uh, by the way, I don't knock buyers. If you're working with buyers, that's fine too. Um, but what I love about sellers is if you take a listing, the whole MLS works for you. God bless America. All right. So now let's break down winning the year and we're almost done here. Right. So in this example, right, 
Um, this is what winning the year looks like. $85,000 net close goal of 18 units. Okay, that's where we're trying to go. But to win the year, you got to win the month, right? And in this case, to win the month, we've got to hold three listing appointments. But to win the month, we got to win the week. And to win the week means we got to set one listing appointment. And to win the week means we got to win the day. And I think you know where I'm going with this. And to win the day, in this example, 16 conversations. Because if you consistently win the day, you will win the week. If you consistently win the week, you will win the month. If you consistently win the month, you will win the year. And the thing I really want to keep you focused on is the, the thing that you can exert the most control over is the number of conversations. Um, I know Tanya will agree with me on this. Guys, I forbid you from ever blaming the market for the condition of your business. I forbid you. The market is the market. The market is the market. The only thing that makes the market good or bad is your skill level and the amount of action you take. It is shocking to me how good a market can be when you're taking tons of action with great skill. It is shocking to me how bad a market can be if you're taking little action with low skill. Isn't it amazing? You get to decide how this market is. I'm not saying the market isn't challenging. I'm not saying that there aren't specifics and uh, complexities to it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, of course. And massive action coupled with skill conquers markets. All I'm saying. Okay. So to win this game, you guys, decide what the score needs to be and by when. Work backwards on your KPIs. How many appointments do you need to go on and how many conversations will get you there? I think if you stay focused like that, you will certainly get there. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the share right now, and we've got a few minutes. Um, it will, I, this, what would be great right now, you guys, is to share any insights that maybe you have after having sort of processed this. It's good to share insights because the, the thing you share may help somebody else who's listening. Um, or if you have a question, um, certainly ask it now. Um, and Maria probably has the cutest assistant ever. Got to teach her how to do closings. <laughs> My, um, we had an I agent on the her. team. We had an agent on the team that had a yes. seven-year-old, and the seven-year-old she trained the seven-year-old to uh, give out her business cards. Let me tell you something, D Diana Kokoska, who is a legendary lead generation uh, lead generator for listings. Um, her story is she put her three little kids in a red wagon and would tow them from house to house as she knocked on doors. Oh and yeah. She said, I, I take her door knocking with me. Yeah, I do. I, I, I put I, her I, in a little thing. I, it's dude. It's, it's brilliant, man. <laughs> it's brilliant. Love it. Questions. Ahas. Tell me something you learned. You didn't know. And don't make me call on you because I will. And just because your camera's off, oh, I see you. I see you. Called on me yesterday, so it's somebody. Else I know. So, Maria, you're, you're good. Although I may come back to you just because, I don't know, I'm mean. Michael, Michael, tell me something. Tell me something. Something. No, no. <laughs> oh, Michael. Yeah, no. Oh, my gosh. Michael, Michael. Good to see you, bro. Remember me now. I'm of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> no, it was great content, man. I, I, I was here really thinking about those numbers because if I tell you that I had them on top of my head, I would be lying and I, I don't like to lie, <laughs> right? So that's that's an exercise I have to do, you know, especially for the goals uh, that I have for this year. Okay. Do you feel like right now, can you say securely you're having enough conversations or is that an area where you can improve, do you think? No, I, I have definitely have room to improve in there. 
Okay, good. Ben. Oh, Ben, hey, I see you. I, I see you, buddy. I see you, buddy. How's it going? It's going good, man. Tell me something. Um, so I really do uh, like how you broke down the numbers into quarterly. Um, I think it really helps to be able to visualize that, um, as well as just being able to visualize the number of calls we actually need to make, the volume. Um, Tanya said earlier, it is a numbers game. So um, when you think about, about that, you put it into perspective, um, sometimes we aren't doing enough. <laughs> and you have to, you know, kick up that volume up a notch. So. So really what, like what so Ben, what do you think? What what's the takeaway? What what's the action item for you, you know, going into next week? What do you what are you gonna do? I wouldn't even say next week. I would say tomorrow, um, okay. just so I can start calling, um, just having more conversations. I think um that's underrated. It is an underrated aspect of it. Um, and you sometimes have conversations in whatever you're doing, whether you're running an errand, uh just walking, whatever the case is those conversations shouldn't go unnoticed. Yeah, you guys. Ben, what market are you in? Uh, Orlando. Okay, so are you, are you on Chris's team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so Ben. So Michael, Ben, Maria, and Carmelo are all on Chris's team. All right. They all have tons of leads. So, yeah, so I'm, I mean, yeah. Those conversations, that's a, that's a $5,000 paycheck you're, you're sifting your way to. It's real. It's real money. It's it is real money. In fact, you could make a case that um, every time you dial the phone, a cash register does go off in the sky. You've <laughs> just you've just got to keep dialing till you get there. Most agents I know um, do the right thing. They just don't do it for long enough. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, good. More conversations. And if you're on Nolan's team, dude, there is no shortage of leads. And may I say, I'm a, I'm a, I am I am a fan. I'm a fan of old internet leads. Same. I am. I talk to them about it all the time. Dude, that, I mean, right? Every yeah. time I go in there, I don't work any of the internet leads other than the ones that, that are old. And I pull stuff out of there all the time that yeah. have, have gone un, unanswered. Totally. I totally, when it was, I just, when it was, I was going to say with, I was going to say with, with Fizbo's and expires, I always, I always, always would work the old stuff first. I, uh, we just converted one that was in the system for 2014 days. Wow. Yeah. Yep. If you dial enough, mm -hmm. if you, if you dial enough, you will have, you will have an amazing collection of stories just like that one. And, and it will sound to people like, wow, what are, you're so lucky, so random. The answer is no, no, no. I just got up every day and I did the thing that Chris Nolan told me to do over and over and over again. Yeah, the harder I work, the luckier I am, Pally. But here's the thing that you guys got to understand. You aren't talking to 10 to 15 people a day. If you're rolling into the office or picking up the phone and giving yourself 30 minutes and being like, all right, I made my calls because it takes about 30 minutes to get into your groove. Okay. To get everything going, to get all the jitters out. And then you literally have to give yourself two to three hours to be talking to 10 to 15 people a day. And then you can go home. That's what, they, that's what we've been taught in coaching. If you just sat and for two to three hours and called for two to three hours a day, go to the movies, go have lunch with your wife, go hang out with your friends or your kids. You can afford to do that because you're building that pipeline. But the biggest problem that I see with a lot of you guys you are like, all right, I made some calls. I made a couple calls for 20 minutes. No, I don't see many people actually taking two to three hours or an hour and a half to three hours to make calls. That's why you guys that actually have leads don't have a big enough pipeline. Uh, the, game, the, the game that I played with myself that was fairly effective, um, e every day I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get up until I'd... I got somebody, I got somebody to, uh, to agree to meet with me. That, that was the game I played because the, the logic in my head was 
what else do I have to do today? What else, what else do I have to do today? I, I am in the, in the way I kind of thought of it back then, and I still think of it this way today. I'm in the appointment setting business. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be my own ISA. So, and there were days, you know, I'd start dialing at eight o'clock and sometimes I wouldn't get up out of that chair till five or six at night. Because sometimes it, it took that, for me anyway, because my skill level was low, it, it took that much dialing to finally get somebody to meet with me. And even those appointments weren't super qualified. But over time, through massive action, you will find that your skill level develops. You don't want to make as many phone calls. So you start sharpening up the scripts. You don't want to go on unqualified appointments so you get better at qualifying. You don't want to go on at listing appointments that, you, that you're tired of hearing no. So you really start working on your listing presentation to convert. So what you find is the conversations drives improvement at all levels. Trust me, when you've gone three in a row, four in a row, five in a row, and you've heard no, you're like, I'm I, 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 sorry, honey, I can't hang out tonight because I have got to go over the listing appointment because I am not, not getting this agreement tomorrow. I can't hear no again. I just can't. It's now it's now it's messing with my mind. By the way, uh, a characteristic of the game that I didn't put on there, but what you'll find is the guys who play this game do play with a certain level of intensity and urgency. I mean, that kind of goes under the category of the game's got to matter. When games matter, people show up differently. Well, listen, you guys, uh, this has been great. I really appreciate you showing up on a Wednesday uh, in, you know, at, uh, at dinner time. So, <laughs> so Tanya, I, that's it for me for now. But uh, listen, I appreciate you guys giving me this much time. And you guys, I have a call tracking sheet. Many of you have it. Some of you are new and haven't had your call with me. Okay. So I have a workbook with a call tracking sheet. I have a best life calculator um, for you that Jim created uh, for you guys to do that. Or just do your old fashioned check mark. Here's what I'm going to do. You guys have to report them. Um, and just know that it, some of you have to mix it up a little bit. Okay. Some of you are like, I'm going to dial for dollars on the phones and the leads. But put 25 business cards in your pocket and go sit at a Starbucks and introduce yourself to people, introduce yourself, people at the gym, get, that is a big, uh, salesman, um, uh, skill set. They're like, pick up 25 cards. I'm giving 25 cards out this week. I'm gonna meet 25 people. I don't go home. I don't have a beer. I don't celebrate till 25 of these cards go out. I, I mean, I don't drink beer, but Chris. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Guys, I, I order my business cards 2,500 at, at a clip because I give them out like candy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things is I don't just give them out. I'm always trying to get the information back. You know, so I, I have the digital business card. I have the other one. I actually got a call yesterday from a business card I gave out four years ago. All right. I, I mean, that that's kind of rare, but it My happened. question is, is what kind of felony or like, because Chris is getting all the, the, the people that have oh, killed each other. Oh, it, it's, it's been a, it's been a wild week. We've had felonies out, out the wazoo and uh, we have one guy that got arrested. He's in jail. Um, we're we're going to list his house. He's got to sell his house. He's in jail for fentanyl. Um, another guy's in jail. He's gone. He's gone. I'm dealing, I'm dealing with the lawyers. Um, he's away. He shot his wife in the back eight times. The, mm. um, then I met a woman this morning at the gas station. She wants a house. She's getting back on top because she went away to uh, prison. She's back because she shot her gun at a couple of random people. So yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a, you, been live, a, in Com you live in Compton or something? No, no. I, I live in a nice area, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, have the conversations guys. Is that a nice area? I don't want to see the ugly one, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm in all sorts of different areas. I, I had a last was last week, I think it was 11 listing appointments in the week, and I was from I was from the most rundown, beat up, you know, houses. One that like I actually we got out of because I wasn't sure that the floor was stable enough to hold all of us to you know million dollar you know waterfront you know properties. So. You know, I take them all. 
It is amazing well, when you're when you're in a listing appointment and you're standing in the living room and you realize I'm standing on dirt. <laughs> yeah. This this house is this house does not have a floor. I I'm gonna list it. I'm gonna list it anyway. I had a raccoon walk in on one of my one of my listing appointments. The door was so rotted. The, the door the raccoon walked through the door and and crapped on the uh, the kitchen floor while I was in the, middle of the, in the middle of the appointment. And you're just like sign here, press hard. Yeah, yeah. So walked out with the listing though. Yeah, sure. Heck yeah, we'll yeah, throw well, the raccoon out too, first. right? <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it is, you know, good or bad. I mean, there's houses out there and, you know, people need the service, but Jim's hundred percent right. It's a, it's a numbers game. Just getting out there, having the conversations. I have conversations everywhere I go. You know, and I'm not shy about it. And, and the more, the more you do it, the better you get. I would not, I would not call myself necessarily an extrovert or, or naturally inclined to have these kinds of conversations, but just repetition mastery comes with time on task over time so you guys will get you guys will be good at it you just got to do it enough love it jim as always you've been a wealth of information um you guys will have him come back okay because i yes. really love jim but he's not going to come back until he knows that you guys have put this into practice okay you guys please don't get caught up in your marketing and your brand and your website and all the things. Cause here's the deal. EXP is a brand. You don't need to be branding yourself all crazy right now because EXP is the biggest brand in the world. Okay. Get your business cards, start calling and all the rest will come. Stop training yourselves to death. Okay. And if you're going to do this and show up, then take the action behind it. And I'm actually going to be following up with all of you guys. So be ready. I'm ready. All right. Talk to Have you a soon. great evening, you guys. Bye. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Jim.